Hey, what's up, guys? I'm going to show you how to make, uh, write a parse method for both value types and reference types. And uh, I'm just going to follow what I've learned from writing with the uh, .NET framework. And it's pretty logical how they do it, so I'm going to do it like that. So you need to make parse methods because parse methods return info regarding whether or not the parsing ha or is a success. And this is very important because you want the person using the parse method to perform their own operations regarding uh, whether or not it has succeeded as well. It's pretty sketchy uh, constructing data in the constructor so implicitly. So you don't want to do that. You want to use a parse method. So this is a simple vertex, cl uh, vertex class. It's a value type right now. Uh, I had to get rid of the auto-implementing get set accessors with the value types because you are using the class before you're actually before you create the object with the implementing get it set accessor. So you have to get rid of those. Um, basically got a simple uh, two string method down here so I can present it after it's been parsed. Okay, so let's begin writing the parse method. So it's a public. I'm gonna zoom in a bit. And our parse method is going to return bool regarding whether or not it has succeeded. This is common with value types because we cannot set the value type to null, of course. Okay, so we're going to accept a string and then a vertex object. We're going to use out because out means that we are setting a value, whereas ref means that we're modifying a value. And without, it is required of us to actually set the value. As well, anybody using this method doesn't need to initialize their object. It can be uninitialized, if that's even a word. But um, let's begin. So I'm going to use regular expressions to parse the, uh, the string. And we can do it like this since the pattern is going to be pretty small. Actually, the patterns, I'm going to put the pattern in its own string. So, so I'm going to use named groups here. So, one or more digits for X. And there's going to be a comma, and then there's a space, and then we can do the same thing. For Y and Z. And I think that will do it. So now let's get our match. The input is text, and the pattern is pattern. We're going to check to see if the match is a success. So if match success, then we'll do stuff here. Otherwise, we're going to return false. And we have to set our out parameter. So vertex is equal to new vertex. And I think we can use its default constructor. Yes, so once we do this, everything's going to be zero in the vertex, which is irrelevant because we are returning our success here. And if success is equal to false, then this returned vertex is not really going to be used in any way. Okay, so if match.success, then let's get our numbers here. So we're going to get x match.groups. Can I get the x group, its value, and we're going to have to parse it. I'm going to use the parse method to keep it simple. I'm unsure the flexibility of the digits uh, formatting character, or whatever character it's called. Uh, it can return some numbers that the parse method here may not handle. So you sh if you do plan on doing this, you probably should look up a bit about that. 
So x, y, z. And here we are just going to return the vertex. So new vertex. Um, sorry, we're going to set our vertex. I thought I was working with a, a reference type for a second there. So we're going to set our vertex that's passed in with the out parameter. So vertex is equal to new vertex x, y, z. And we need to return true here to indicate success. OK. And I think that's all there is to the parse method. So let's go into the form constructor here and write some code to test it out. So vertex, vertex, and we're not going to initialize it, and we're going to call it. We're going to call the parse method. So static method parse, and we're going to parse a number here. So thirty-two three space forty-four space. 66 and then pass in our vertex okay so we're gonna start it up and there it is three two three four four sixty six and we can just do something crazy we can add some uh, crazy characters in there and it should return zero zero zero. So there it is, zero zero zero. And of course, the parse method is going to return um, false. So there it is, success false. And if it's right, it's going to return true. And I forgot to break it, so. Success is equal to true. And that's how you want to write a parse method for a value type. So let's do the same thing for a reference type. And this is how I would do it with a reference type. You don't see parse methods often with reference types because reference types are a bit more complex objects and usually you can't construct them using a string. Okay, so let's go up here, change this to class. Uh, compile it and there is no default constructor of course and we don't really need that and we're going to return vertex instead of bool and we can get rid of this here and the return Okay, so this is how I would write a parse method for a uh, reference type. So if match is success, then we're going to construct the object and return it as the uh, return type. Otherwise, we're going to return null. Null indicates that it's not a success. And if you're going to do this, you have to uh, make sure that you summarize this. So go down to returns here. Say returns null if fail or something like that don't don't spell it wrong like that because that would be weird so I can show you that right now so vertex vertex is equal to parse it'll work the same way except you have to use it differently There it is, 33, 33, 33. And if it can't parse this thing, then you're going to get null. So I'm going to get an error when I try to use the two string method here. Okay, and that's how you write parse methods. See you later.